in this English lesson, I wanted to help you learn the English phrase on the same page. When you are on the same page as someone else, it means you are thinking the same thing. It means that you agree with each other. Today at work, I was talking with a colleague. I was talking with a coworker, and we were in charge of planning an event, but we decided that we can't have the event because of COVID. We hadn't talked about it, but today when we talked, we realized we were on the same page. We realized that when we were talking and thinking about that event, that we were thinking the same thing. So in English, when you are on the same page as someone else, it means that you are thinking the same thing and that you agree with them. The other phrase I wanted to teach you today is the phrase, turn the page. When you turn the page, it doesn't mean you're turning a page in a book necessarily. It could mean that you're ch starting to rain, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Sorry, should I just continue the lesson? Was that funny for you? I was sitting there and all of a sudden it just started to rain. So anyways, I'll sit here in my junkie shed. And you also heard me say the S-H-I-T word, which I normally don't say very often. But anyways, sometimes in life you turn the page. It means that you're doing one thing and you decide to start doing something different. Sometimes when we're having meetings at work, my boss will say, okay, we've talked about this enough, it's time to turn the page and let's move on. So once again, when you are on the same page as someone in English, it means that you are thinking the same thing. And when you turn the page, it can mean that you are turning a page in a book, but it can also mean that you are just starting to do something differently. Sometimes in class, I'll say this as well. I'll say, we're done with this part of the lesson. We're gonna turn the page and we're going to do something different now. So it simply means that you're doing something different. Hey, let's look at a comment. Sorry, I'm still laughing because I, uh, I wasn't expecting it to rain. That was kind of funny. Um, I should turn around, shouldn't I? And show you the actual, sorry, I'm knocking the camera all over the place today. But yeah, there's definitely drops coming down. Let me sit down here again. Uh, sorry. Uh, today's comment is from Julia. And Julia says this. It's not as big of a pain when cheap things get broken compared to expensive things. Two years ago, I bought an expensive pair of boots. Sorry. Two years ago, I bought expensive boots, which I expected to wear for two or three years. But that same winter, they were completely ruined. The leather cracked and the sole came unstuck. Maybe it happened because of the reagents sprinkled on the street. That was real buyer's remorse then. And my reply was, I feel bad for you. It's, it is never fun when you pay for something and it doesn't last as long as you expected. So thank you, Julia, for that comment. Um, I feel bad for you. We have the same problem here in Canada. There's a lot of salt and a lot of de-icing things that they put on the ground and on the road during the winter. And it can really wreck your boots and your shoes. So I'm sorry. It, and then I'm glad you used the phrase buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse is when you buy something and then later you regret buying it. So you buy something and you're happy with it, maybe for a little while, but then eventually either it breaks or you don't like it, or maybe it didn't fit if it's an article of clothing and you have some buyer's remorse because you didn't actually like it. So anyways, again, Julia, thank you for that comment. I'll use the last few seconds just to take all of you for a walk out here in the rain as I head back to the house. Um, it's lots of fun doing these things outside. It's lots of fun doing these lessons outside. Uh, but every once in a while, the weather doesn't cooperate. The sky doesn't look as dark for you as it does for me. But anyways, thanks for watching. See you later.